we are going to study about a very very important concepts called mass effect and kinetic energy so these two plays a very very important role in order to understand and also for conversion of one terms of energy to another right so we'll study it first so what is a mass effect so from the word itself we can easily able to understand its meaning so mass effects and kinetic energy so these two things reveal all the secrets which have been behind the universe right what is that so you can say that a mass of a given nucleus is always found to be what less than the sum of the mass of the individual constituents if we ask you to calculate the mass by giving any atoms in or element we will calculate so we will take that how many number of protons plus then we will take how many number of neutrons plus we already know about what 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 is the mass of one proton and we know about what the mass of one neutron then what we do we will multiply the total number of protons into the mass of one proton and we will multiply the total number of neutrons into the mass of one neutron then we will add together because we know that the mass of proton and neutron join together to form what the mass of a nucleus or atoms is it clear to me right therefore in order to calculate that we calculate the mass of a nucleon what is the nucleon stands for mass of proton plus mass of neutron give rise to what the mass of a nucleon right so if we individually calculate mass as well as we take that atom and place it in a very rich mass spectrometer and it will show some mass the mass spectroscopy instrument will show some mass that mass value has a small change in the mass difference will be that we call that mass as what mass effect so the uh, experimentally verified mass and the calculated mass has both the mass having some difference in its value the calculated mass and the mass spectrometer value is what there is some difference in the value between them we call the difference between the measurement of this mass is said to be what mass effect Where does mass has been made? So where the mass has been disappeared, it is a biggest question, right? So actually, what the calculated mass? It should be that. But by measuring the mass of the meter, the mass is slightly less than the calculated mass. Therefore, they have a question that where this mass has been disappeared. Later, by means of Einstein, our famous Einstein, right? Albert Einstein, and his mass and its relationship has been proven, and from that knowledge, they know that the soft mass has been converted in the form of energy. The energy only helps the things to bond inside the nucleus. So all the protons and neutrons have been lying inside the nucleus, inside the nuclear boundary, right? So they have been bonded towards the nucleus. We call that as what? The binding energy. So apart from the Coulomb's repulsive force, we know that as per the nature, we studied that the like charges repel, and unlike charges, what attract? Proton and proton will have the same charge. So the repulsion should be that. So that what is happening? Everything has been placed inside the same nucleus. Then what is said to be that? Whether the law is what? No. Apart from the Coulomb's law of repulsion, there is one more force which helps me to bond or bind all the same charged particles inside the same density mass of the nucleus. We call that energy as what? Binding energy. So where the energy is coming from? Due to this mass difference. We call this mass difference as what? The mass effects. Can you able to understand that? Can you able to understand that? I will explain it in Tamil, right? So what is happening? In the issue of element, we have to do or the proton and neutron are to calculate by the value of the mass. So spectrometer basis, the original and calculate for the mass is there. So a small variation in mass is there. And the mass is the function. So mass energy is there. Here the energy is there. Here the mass is there. Here the protons from the neutron, neutron, proton, neutron, and neutrons from the binary. Again, because we studied that, now we just for same charge that we have done before that we have done that is full of strong repulsion. And the repulsion for a mere or for just now that the all particles in the crystal are bound by the particles. We call that as a binding energy. Binding means that love and it all of them are different kinds. So like that, so everything has been put inside the nucleus and has been bounded out and all bound out and all for that type of energy as what binding energy. So this binding energy. The atoms are very stable. When it is less, we can say that it is unstable. 
children at the meridian point, radia bruti. We are calling it as one binding energy. Now we'll see how to represent it. We can clearly understand by this, right? See that? We take an example of what carbon atom. So carbon atom is what carbon atom, how many number of protons, how to calculate? We have already learned about what how to represent a mass number, an atomic number, and a mass of protons. So this is what? Yes, mass number. This atomic number, right? So what the atomic number gives? Atomic number gives number of protons and number of electrons. That was total number of protons present in this what is six. Total number of electrons present in this what? Again six. The number of neutrons, how to get number of neutrons? Mass number minus atomic number. So 12 minus 6 gives you what? The number of the neutrons. Therefore, carbon C C12 atom has 6 protons, 6 neutrons, and 6 electrons. We already know about the mass of a proton, we can talk about what? Atomic mass unit. Therefore, 6 into mass of 1 neutron gives you total mass of a neutron and the carbon atom. 6 into mass of 1 proton. That gives you what total number of protons present in a carbon atom. 6 into mass of an electron. Mass of one electron gives you what total number of mass of electron present in a carbon atom. Now what do you have to calculate? We have to calculate the total mass of the nucleus that is we are expecting to get, right? So then the nucleus means what it has only proton and neutron. Therefore, we are going to add both proton and neutron number. Therefore, the mass to be expected for carbon to be is what? 12.0958 into atomic mass unit. But in a mass spectroscopy, we will calculate the value to be equal to what? 12 times of the atomic mass unit. So we have to separate what we have to separate from that. We have to separate the mass of electron because here we are not concerned mass of electron. Only we have calculated of what? Mass of the nucleus. So in order to but in spectroscope or spectrometer, we will take fully from the we will take the measurement. We are not able to remove that. Therefore, we are removing the mass of electron. What is the mass of electron? Minus 0 0.0 power. Minus 0 0.003 atomic mass over. Then therefore, by calculating this, we get the nuclear mass of the carbon atom found to be equal to what? 11.9967 times of the atomic mass unit. What is the it is 12.09. What is the calculated one? What is the real of what we instrumentally what we have to? It is 11.9. There is a small fraction of difference in mass is that we call that fraction of difference of mass to be what? Mass difference. So we have said that the experiment mass of a carbon atom nucleus is less than the total total mass of individual constituent and the value we call delta. We call the value equal to what is the difference? Zero point zero nine eight 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 times of atomic mass unit. This much of mass has been different from the calculated value of the individual constants. We call this mass as the mass defect, and it has been represented in the what? Del m. Del stands for what? Change in value. Del stands for what? Change in value. So del m stands for what? Mass defect. Right. <coughs> So what? 
one mass, right? So that is what is what we call the MC square. So my mass will be converted in terms of energy, and energy will be converted in terms of mass. This mass which has been disappear has been given in terms of energy or released in the form of energy. It helps me to bind the nucleons inside the nuclear. We call that energy as what bind energy. And the bind Mass of an atom. Therefore, by replacing these two, the final will be 
to evaluate what the binding energy of a given atom. Right? So this is the total binding energy. What is the total binding energy stands for? So if an atom, carbon atom has been taken, means the six protons and six neutrons to be bonded inside the nucleus, the total energy will be represented by this. Right? So if we say, if we, what is the energy required for binding one proton and one neutron ring, then you can say it by a special name called binding energy per nucleon. Per nucleon means what? The energy needed to bind or separate one proton and one neutron. We call that as what? Binding energy per nucleon. So we can represent BE bar. So BE bar represents what? It's an average binding energy. So BE bar here represents what? Binding energy per nucleon. Therefore, the energy equation will be divided by what? By the number of mass number. What is the mass number? Number of protons plus number of neutrons, right? So that will give rise to binding energy per nucleon. Is it clear to you? So binding energy represents the total energy, and binding energy per nucleon represents what? It is an average binding energy to bond one proton and one neutron inside a nucleus. We have learned about binding energy and binding energy per nucleon. So what we have learned? So binding energy is nothing but what? It is the total energy which is needed for the total number of nucleons to be present or separated from the nucleus. Or binding energy per nucleon stands for what? It is the energy required to break one neutron or one nucleon from it. We call that as what? Binding energy per nucleon. This is the empirical equation in which the mass of it and binding energy can be represented. Right. Now we are going for a very very important primer question and it plays a very important role we call that the binding energy curve. So that diagram graph, graph represents what? So along the x-axis we are going to take number of nucleons present in an element and along the x-axis or y-axis we are going to take the binding energy curve. So the scientists have studied that various elements for all the elements they studied the binding energy and they have been formulated in a curve and this curve clearly tells about which elements are most stable and which elements are with this radioactivity. So what is graph in the first word? So we can say that the average binding energy per nucleon is nothing but the energy required to separate a single nucleon. So that is clearly explained to this curve. So we can say that uh, if any element is having more binding energy means the elements are said to be more stable and it is non-radioactive. Right? It will not involve in what? Disintegration. It will not involve in any nuclear fusion or fission reactions. It will not involve in any other nuclear radioactivity process. So we call that as that. So by knowing and studying the binding energy curve itself, we can easily be able to say about whether the element is suitable for radioactive purpose or not. If an element is having less binding energy means, then automatically it was unstable. So unstable element immediately starts to radiate with its energy towards the surrounding, then we call that as what? A radioactive element. So that element is being was in the whole radioactive process as well as it will help in nuclear fusion and fusion process. Right. So what is so interesting? Very, very simple idea and very, very easy idea. We can say that what is the number which has been taken place? A yes, stands for what? A yes, stands for mass number. So we are going to represent everything in terms of mass number. So when the mass number has been started increasing, or oh, therefore the mass number increases, and increases the maximum value to a value of what? 8.8 million electron volt for the mass number to physics, which is nothing but atom. After that, it has been slowly what? Decreasing. So till from the basic value of 1 and to a value of 56, the curve is what? Then it is slowly, sharply increasing. After the value of mass of 56, the curve is what? Slowly decreasing. It is the first condition, right? Therefore, we can say that the average binding energy curve for this is said to be what? So what is the maximum value here for I? It is said to be what? 8.8 million electron volt over this region. We can say that the average binding energy value is 8.5 million electron volt. This is the very very highest value. And rather than we just have these values, all the elements are said to be what? Very stable and they have non radio becomes a two-point. Right? The next we can say it is not a sharp curve, right? So we can say that there are some peaks of curve has been arisen between that. Why the peaks has been done, we can call it as a 
for your skills. Some balance, it will have what? Some peaks or that. It's not a smooth one, right? Some, some peaks or that. So we go that. So when your atomic number rises from 0 or 1 to 20, that is some peaks will be there. So for what kind of peaks will be there? Means we just have your mass numbers, uh, multiples of 4. 4 means what? So we said medium, 4. Then oxygen, 18. Right? So for, for that, so next is 4, 8, 12. Uh, 16, right? That the 4 or 5 element at that time. So, which element is having a mass number 4 and multiples of 4 will choose the reference peaks in it. That's the peak is that. So, otherwise, the curve will be what? A smooth increasing curve will be that. Is that medium, right? If I take 6, it becomes what? Carbon. If I take 8, it becomes 3. Oxygen. Then 12. Oh, 12 stands for C612. No? So, 12 stands for carbon. Uh, but therefore, we can say that uh, here, H2, H2, 4. Then, we can say that what? Boron. Right? It becomes to be what? 8. Then, next one. 3, 6, 12. Right? Then, 8, 4, 16. 4, 8, 12, 16. Multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16. For these 4 things, we will have what? The reference peaks will be occurred between the element A is equal to mass number 1 to 20. Right? So after that, the 40 to 120, the curve will be what? From what flat? From A to 120, it is sharply increasing. And along the sharply increasing curve, an element which is having the mass number. Nuclear fission reaction. 
action. So nuclear fusion has to take place. You have to give us a primary state that energy is not enough for. Right? So whenever the nuclear fusion is taking place, and that also nuclear fusion will also take place. So in Sandinista, nuclear fusion reaction is taking place. The nuclear fusion reaction helps me to what? Release the energy in the form of a light in Sandinista. Right? Nuclear fusion reaction is helping me in what? The nuclear reactor in order to produce the electricity. So this binding energy and the mass effects plays a very very important role and we know that uh, four fundamental forces that in that nuclear force plays a very important role because the short range force and also very very strong force in nature. Right? So that is the force which has been bound at this end and it is called as what? A nuclear force. So the nuclear force and the binding energy clearly explains that. So Tarawa Padichikuno, so the Lena Sarang Pira and Sarang mass number one level twenty. So twenty to one more the you know, sharp increase of the sharp increase of the one in the oxygen, Murdu Bari, the end element of Murdu Bari, end of the element of the mass number one, one four and multiples of those in the color at times is more. And ask for the distance between two 
therefore we can say that uh, proton has been accelerated or has influenced by this force right so we are going to have an acceleration produced by a proton therefore acceleration experienced by the proton when this force is acting on that what is the formula of force is equal to mass into acceleration acceleration is equal to what force by mass so force divided by mass that gives you what 1.4 Therefore, a proton has been experiencing this much of acceleration, which is 10 power 28 times greater than the acceleration due to gravity. Right? Therefore, by this condition, the proton, since in the nucleus, has to fly apart from that. That much strong repulsive force has been acting between the two protons. Therefore, the nucleus to be fly apart, and the proton from that should be moved apart. But it is not happening. All the protons have been Binded inside the nucleus. Therefore, what is happening? Apart from the strong repulsive force, there is one other force called strong attractive force. We call that strong attractive force as a nuclear force. Therefore, the attractive force which helps me to hold the nucleus together, we call that as a nuclear force. We call and also we can say that this force is a very short range force. Short range force means what? This force exists only inside the nucleus. When I come out of the nucleus, it is not holding good. Therefore, we call that type of a nuclear force as what? A nuclear force. The strong repulsive force between all the protons has been overcome by another attractive force. We call that attractive force as what? Nuclear force. Later, by the scientist for Luca, right, he says that there is an exchange of a elementary particle called mesons between protons and protons or protons and neutrons. So, the argument to that reason is also they are saying that the proton and proton, proton and neutrons have been binded in second nucleus. So, no one clear, it will not know what we are. Though the experiments reveal that atom has been made up of three elementary particles, we call it electron, proton, and neutron. There are more number of elementary particles that have been revealed over that. So no one has been studying the weekly into a Who knows? So maybe one of you among you can also can prove that there are more number of elementary particles that can be present in an atom, right? So the people who reveals the truth of an atom will become the greatest science or become the god of the right? So that much truth has been hidden in an atom. We have moved to a meter of what? 10 power minus n. That is called as what? Nanotechnology. Nano. Nano is not what? 10 power minus n. What is the size of the atom? It is 10 power minus 10. So you have to move further behind it to see the surface of an atom. If we go further to 10 power minus 15, it means we can see the nucleus. Right? Under conditions, we can easily be able to find what are the other types of elements which have been present in the nucleus. Right? Right. So that we can see, we can see what is happening. So you now we are studying that only proton and neutron has been bound inside the nucleus, and we are saying that the nucleus has been bounded by means of a strong force we call it as a nuclear force. And it is we are going to study about the properties of the nuclear force through various experiments which have been revealed in that, and the basic properties are already discussed. That what it is it is a very short range force. Why right? the nuclear force is only a short range force that is up to a force of 10 power minus 15 meter. Apart from that, the nuclear force will never exist. Right? The next we can say that it is the strongest force of nature. We know about the four fundamental forces: gravitational force, electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. Strong nuclear force is one of the strongest forces in nature, though it is a short range force. So it is a strong force in nature and also we can say that the strong nature of attraction will be same for proton, 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 neutron and neutron and neutron. Though neutrons are neutral in nature, the same type of force will exist between all these three parts of neutron. We call that as what? A nuclear force. And the last one we can say that the nuclear force will not be existing for electrons. So electrons is out of the nucleus, right? So nuclear force does not Electron, therefore, we can say that it does not add the chemical properties of atom. We already studied what we studied previously. The chemical properties of all atom depends upon the electrons which have been present. Since the nuclear force is not going to act for the electron, it is not going to make any change in the chemical properties. Therefore, the chemical properties of all the atoms remains the same. Right? It's a very, very important.
one female based solution or nucleophile female based solution. So what is the nucleophile? Here we are proving that what is the repulsive force in the aspect which is produced due to what two protons of distance of one kilometer apart, and we stated that this only in the electrostatic force is existing between the two proton pairs. Then what will happen? The two proton will fly apart, and the nucleus will move apart. But that is apart from the electrostatic force of repulsion, there exists a one more strong force which binds all the things together in the nucleus. Means we call that force as what? A nuclear force. And the nuclear force properties are what? It is a very short range force because it is acts only inside the nucleus. When it comes out of it, the nuclear force doesn't act on it. And next is what? It is one of the strongest force in nature. And the same force of will be appeared for all the things called well, proton, 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 neutron, 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 and so. And he says that nuclear force does not act on electron. Therefore, the chemical properties of atom will never change. Why? So in the next video, we will see about what the radioactivity and its indicates. Right? Thank you.